Hi everyone, Aiden here with the trailer. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Retrax Pro MX hard tunnel cover here on our 2014 Ram 2500 with the Ram boxes on the side. This is gonna be a hard tunnel cover. It's a canister style, so it rolls up into a canister at the front of the bed. And it's gonna keep the bed covered up, locked up and secure. It's made of aluminum, so it's nice and solid. No one can cut through it like they could in a soft tunnel cover and it's gonna help cover the bed to improve fuel economy. Let's check it out. So obviously it's gonna be more secure than a soft tunnel cover, and especially compared to having an open bed. With this, no one can see inside, so that's already a theft deterrent, but in addition to that one inch thick aluminum paneling, you do have locks built in, so I can lock it up to make sure that no one can open up the lever and the handle to open it, or unlock it if I wanna open it up and use it myself. It works in conjunction with your locking tailgate to make sure that no one gets inside. Now, one thing I will say, and you probably noticed a bit of a struggle right there, is that because I have to reach so far in, and especially because I'm only pulling from one side, it kind of puts this weird leverage on the tunnel cover. Pulling it from the middle, if I'm standing in the bed, it's a lot less cumbersome and easier to do. So for that reason, I think the canister style on this truck maybe isn't the best fit just because you do have to reach so far in, you don't have good leverage, and it's a little more difficult to open. That being said though, this is brand new out of the box, and over time, it's gonna break in and become easier to use. One thing I do wanna point out is that it's got weather stripping all around the cover. That's gonna help keep rain and water out to keep it sealed from the elements. If water or anything were to get in when it rains, the canister is gonna collect that water, but it has drain tubes at the bottom that run outside the bed to keep that from sitting in there. So it will drain out from the canister, keeping everything weather tight. The side rails sit inside from the bed rails and from our Ram box here. So we do retain full functionality of our Ram box, even with this installed. And when I close the Ram box, that weather strip just falls back down flat so nothing gets folded in or bent out of shape. So it all works together really well. Now one advantage you do have with this is that you don't have to have it fully open or fully closed. I can partially open it, close that handle until I hear it click and close that weather seal up. And that will lock it in really at any point along the rails. So if I have a partial load, maybe some ladders or lumber partially sticking out above the tailgate, but I wanna leave it mostly covered again for that fuel economy so there's not as much wind drag, I can. I can pretty much set it wherever I want. The whole thing is really discreet and low profile. At the tallest point, it's only sticking up an inch above the bed rails of the truck, so we're not adding much height, and everything looks very clean and very factory. Like I mentioned before, the canister does take up space inside the bed. And with the Ram boxes in here, we are already limited a bit on space in the bed. So to give you some measurements from the front of the bed to where that canister ends, it's gonna be 14 inches. So it's sticking out 14 inches. Underneath, we've got eight and a half inches of space. So it doesn't go all the way to the ground, but there is some limitation there. And you can see on this front corner, there is a diagonal cutout to help give you a little bit more room but overall it is gonna eat into that space and that's about by how much. If you want an option that isn't gonna do that, a tri-fold cover is gonna be your next best option. That's again going to be a hard tunnel cover that folds in three sections, but it just stays on top of the bed. And when it's fully open, it will block the back window, but it also doesn't take up bed space. So those are your two main options. And for this truck, I may lean more towards that tri-fold design. Install is gonna be pretty straightforward. On the inside of the bed, you've got your track system and the tunnel cover is actually gonna utilize that. You've got hard hardware that will slide into these slotted holes and the tunnel cover actually threads directly in there rather than clamping on like it might on some other trucks. So let's go ahead and walk through that process right now. Starting off the installation, we want to unbox the canister and set it out. I usually like to leave it out on the box so it's not on the ground. And a good tip is to get this plastic peel off the canister before you start and before you have it installed. But we have to remove the shipping materials too. You'll do this on both sides, but I like to show you the side of the lock because we do need to unlock that and open it up to get this plastic off of there. 
And then we've got our shipping bracket as well as this tube. The tube is gonna get removed and tossed to the side. The white bracket here is held in with a Phillips head screw on the side. I'm gonna remove that, but hang on to that bracket. We're gonna be using this later in the install as a spacer block to make sure that the tunnel cover is installed properly before tightening everything down. So make sure you keep an eye on it. You won't need the screw though, so you can set that to the side. Next up, we'll attach the rails to the canister. These are side specific. You can tell which side's which by looking for the weather strip. That'll go to the outside of the truck bed. On the inside, we've got a track where our rollers for the canister will go. That's towards the inside of the bed. And then for the front, we've got this tab with a hole and a threaded hole right here as well. Those will be our two attachment points for the canister. And the easiest way to tell is to look for the cutout on the canister that matches the shape of this tab towards the front, get it lined up and screw it in. We'll slide the rollers into this track to get started. And it's really nice to have the canister unlocked so it can freely move. It just makes this whole process a lot easier. And if you've got a second set of hands to maybe help lift, it definitely helps, although it's not entirely necessary. So there you can see that tab line up. So we'll secure that with one of the provided screws using that same Phillips head screwdriver as before. And the second screw will just go in where our shipping bracket was. The last thing we need to do on the ground is install our front cover. The black side's gonna go face up. We've got screw holes on either end and the weather strip here will face the cab. So once you've got that all oriented properly, slide it underneath the side rails until those holes line up with the holes in top of the rails and secure it using the provided screws with the Allen key. In the bed, we need to get some things ready for the tunnel cover. I've got our track system all laid out, ready to go, and I've got a tape measure sitting on top. You wanna make some markings on the top to let us know where our blocks are gonna go. The very first one is gonna be two inches and five eighths of an inch, so two and five eighths. I'll make a little mark right there. I'll do a second mark at 24 and three eighths right here. And then I'll do another one at 58 and 3 sixteenths. Now that measurement, depending on the length of your bed may vary, but for ours today, that's where it's gonna be. And you can find those measurements in your instructions too. But now that we've got those, we can get our blocks assembled and slide them into the track for our tunnel cover. Now these blocks are gonna slide into the top channel of our track system. This is what the assembled one is gonna look like and then it just slides into the markings that we made. And I'll walk you through how to assemble that. As soon as I slide this one in, it's just kind of roughly wherever it needs to go. The first thing is our big block. There's a perfectly flat top, and then this part on the bottom with the track. Then we're gonna have our larger included bolts, and you wanna slide on a lock washer. Now the instructions call for the lock washer, but our kit was missing them entirely. So we did have to go and pick some up to add, but that's easy enough to find on the hardware store if you need to. That will go just on top by that bolt head. And then the part for our track, the T-slot washer, will get threaded loosely onto the end, just like that. That'll run into our track to the marking. So since we made three markings, we're gonna have three of these assemblies per side. And some things to keep an eye on is that you also have some smaller bolts and flat washers that come with your kit. Those are gonna get installed later into the ends with that threaded hole that's facing in towards the middle of the bed. So get these lined up. We want the back side to be lined up with the marking that we made. So right there is looking perfect for us on this one. And I'll just run it down fully tighten it, and if we need to make any spacing adjustments later, we can. But I'll just repeat that process for the other blocks. All right, so the next part, you'll need a second set of hands. It's a bit awkward at the Ram box, but we'll walk this whole assembly forward. 
trying to focus on the canister here and then setting it down in place towards the front of the truck bed there. Once it's up on its own, we can make adjustments from there, but really you just need that second set of hands to lift the assembly into place, set it down, and we can make our adjustments. So the next thing we wanna check on is the spacing. We wanna close the tailgate and grab those spacing shims that we set aside from earlier. That top section is gonna be a little bit thinner and that width is what we want to see between the end of our rail and the start of the tailgate. So we can check, make sure that it fits in and it's touching. So we don't want it to be having a big gap. We want it to be big enough that that can fit in. Check it on both rails to make sure it fits. That'll ensure that the spacing with the rails and the tailgate is the same on both sides. And then we can start tightening things down. To tighten it down, we've got those smaller bolts that we set aside earlier with the flat washers. And you may have to push down on the side rail, but there's gonna be slotted holes that line up with our blocks that we set in place earlier. So just insert those bolts into the threaded holes of the blocks on all three of those locations and then tighten it down and repeat that process on the other side. I've got everything hand tight right now, but before we fully tighten it down, I just wanna come back and check on my weather stripping and make sure that it's laying flat and not folded under. You can see right here is how it's supposed to look and towards the edges right here, it's kind of folded under our ram box. So I'm just gonna come back with a trim tool and make sure all of it's laying flat and getting a good proper weather seal. You wanna make sure you also do this at the front towards the cab of the truck where the canister weather strip is. Once everything's hand tight, we're happy how the weather strip's sitting, we can go back and tighten it up. You'll use a 7 16 wrench to reach the head of these bolts. And you will probably need a wrench because the socket's just not gonna fit very well. And just go around, tighten them pretty evenly. And you don't need to over tighten it, but just enough so that it's nice and snug and the cover's not going anywhere. With everything tightened down, we can check the spacing of the rails. We've got three measurements we need to take. One up by the front cover of the canister, and that's from inside edge to inside edge of the rails. Take note of that measurement, then check at the first point of attachment. Take note of that measurement. You want it to ideally be the same. And then towards the end, we'll do that same measurement again. And again, wanting that to be ideally the same or plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch. Now, if they aren't the same, that means the rails aren't running parallel. That's okay. If the rails are flared out a bit, it does come with these spacer shims that you can put in between the blocks that we attach to and the rails of the tunnel cover to force those arms in a bit. If for whatever reason they are maybe flaring in already, Make sure that everything's fully tightened down and actually pulling it out properly. And then once you've got them running parallel, you can go ahead and test the fitment. Ours are looking pretty good right now. So I'll open up the cover and pull it out. Everything fits pretty well. I'll close it, hop out of the truck, and then make sure that our tailgate closes as well. All of the seals are fitting properly and it's looking pretty good. So I'd say at this point, we're ready to move on to the drain tubes. For the drain tubes, you wanna check underneath the canister. It's gonna be kinda of hard to see on camera. Probably not gonna be able to fit the camera under there very well, but we saw them whenever we had the canister on the ground. Feeling around for it, I've got the first one right here. This end will just plug up into that hole and it's got some latches on there. You'll hear a small click when you push it in and the drain tube runs outside the bed. If you don't already have holes or factory spots where you can drill, you will need to drill through the bed and find a way to route this outside the bed. Our truck has a tunnel cover that it had on previously that has some holes already drilled. So we're just gonna run these out through those existing holes right down here by our tie down hook. But depending on your truck, your bed, you might have a spot in mind or already set up for it. It's really just gonna vary depending on your application. So for us, we're just gonna run this up into that connector 
until I hear that small click. Might not be able to pick it up on the microphone, but I did feel it. And then run the drain tube out through the hole, making sure that there's no kinks in the line or low points. So I'll feed that through and get it right about there is looking pretty good. Repeat that process on the other side. Once the drain tubes are in, you're done. The install process overall wasn't too bad. Sometimes getting the fitment of the rails, making sure they're running parallel is a little tricky, but luckily it wasn't too bad on this truck. Once you're done, you can remove any of these shipping materials like this cork sticker on the actual tunnel cover, throw it to the side. I always like to check maybe for fitment on the Ram box, making sure all that's working properly too. But everything looks good. And I'd say it's gonna work really well on our Ram here. Keep that bed covered up so anything inside is locked up and we get some better fuel economy. Thanks for watching.